This is a bit of a combination tonight. And this will be a little bit mm, different than what we've done so far. And this will be more a... You can take this more as a bit of a meditation. And it is a talk on the Dharma. But... Um, this one will be about crossing the flood. So we will be talking about many different aspects of the Buddha's deeper teachings on impersonality, anatta, and how we can use this understanding through discernment, through wise understanding to, in fact, weaken tremendously the hindrances and distractions by understanding how they arise and how they work and what, what is the place where they arise from. And when we understand that all these things that we are experiencing are more or less happening on their own and to scratch a little deeper under the surface we discover that so much of it we have uh, no control so why holding on and why making things complicated for ourselves why we can while we can simply let go and accept even deeper and um, realize calm and serenity to an even deeper even deeper degree tonight's talk will be uh, starting with the middle length discourses uh, talk called the Ananjaya Sapaya Sutta conducive to the unshakable the unshakable is anything from the fourth jhana upwards and this is 106 and then we will um, see a bit of a classic which is which we will combine to that it is not exactly the um, the features of selflessness the anatta lakana sutta but it will be very very close And this is a wonderful uh, opportunity for us to deepen the practice and to perhaps see and understand um, things uh, uh, with another perspective and uh, opening up some doors that uh, might be uh, keeping us from experiencing uh, deeper levels or deeper release for anybody and there there is really quite wonderful material here for everybody there there will be no questions and answers after this uh, this kind of talk is good to simply let it do its impression on the mind and if possible you're invited to continue meditation afterwards uh, and um, if you have the energy of course and uh, if that feels right to you usually meditation is fairly good after uh, a talk um, on this kind of topic. The Buddha had many ways of teaching and very often he would give long talks that resembled very much guided meditation, guided discernment so that we can see perhaps things that we wouldn't see normally. 
and discover things in another angle that we wouldn't normally. So on this, I invite you to really be at ease and offer your whole attention to the words that are being spoken and do not try to hold on to any particular aspect. Simply let it all flow into your mind and it will simply do its thing as long as you pay attention and enjoy. <laughs> Thus have I heard, once the Awakened One was living with the Kurus in a town called Kamma Sadhamma. There the Awakened One addressed the monks, saying, Monks, Padhante, the monks replied. The Awakened One said this, Monks, sensory gratification is fleeting, hollow, deceptive, the way of thieves. It is a makeshift illusion, the mutterings of those who are lost. Sensory gratification here and now, or sensory gratification that is to come. Sensory perception here and now, or sensory perce perception that is to come. Both alike belong to the realm of the unwholesome, the domain of the unwholesome the bait of the unwholesome, the pasture of the unwholesome. This is where harmful, unwholesome mental states like jealousy, resentment, and violence are given rise. And these constitute an obstacle for the wise meditator in training. Therefore, monks, a wise meditator understands sensory gratification here and now, or a sensory gratification that is to come, sensory perceptions here and now, or sensory perceptions that are to come. Both alike belong to the realm of the unwholesome. And this constitutes an obstacle for the wise meditator in training. Perhaps I could meditate with a vast and completely expanded mind, having gone beyond the world, the six senses, with a resolved mind. And this refers to, of course, all of the Brahma Viharas. For if I were to meditate with a completely expanded mind, having gone beyond the world with a resolved mind, Harmful, unwholesome mental states of jealousy, resentment, and violence would not come to be. Those being given up, my mind will be unenclosed, limitless, and well-developed. Practicing in this way, and often meditating in this way, the mind becomes clear and calm. With this clear and serene awareness, one arrives at the unshakable at that time. Many of you have been experiencing this so far. Separating Monks, this is called the first way conducive to the unshakable. Further, monks, a wise meditator understands sensory gratification here and now, or sensory gratification that is to come, sensory perception here and now, or sensory perception that are to come. Those things are material, and all things that are material belong to the four elements. One who is attached to matter is merely holding on to the four elements. Practicing in this way and often meditating in this way, the mind becomes clear and calm. With this clear and serene awareness, one ar arrives at the unshakable at that time. 
Monk, this is called the second way conducive to the unshakable. Further, monks, a wise meditator understands sensory gratification here and now, or sensory gratification that is to come, sensory perceptions here and now, or sensory perceptions that are to come, matter here and now, and matter that is to come, material perceptions here and now, and material perceptions that are to come. Both alike are constantly changing. And for what is constantly changing, it is not reasonable to wish for it, to look for it, and to remain attached to it. Practicing in this way, and often meditating in this way, the mind becomes clear and calm. Monks, this is called the third way conducive to the unshakable. Further, monks, a wise meditator understands sensory gratification here and now, sensory gratification that is to come, sensory perceptions here and now, and sensory perceptions that are to come, matter here and now, or matter that is to come, material perceptions here and now, or material perceptions that are to come, and even perception of the unshakable, all of them are only just perceptions. Where these perceptions are completely given up, this is peaceful, this is sublime that is the plane of bare awareness or nothingness practicing in this way and often meditating like this the mind becomes clear and calm monks this is called the, th the first way conducive to the plane of bare awareness or nothingness further monks a wise meditator goes to the forest at the root of a tree, or to an empty cabin, and understands, this is empty of a self, or anything that belongs to a self. Practicing in this way and often meditating like this, the mind becomes clear and calm. And with this clear and serene awareness, one experiences the plane of bare awareness at that time. Monks, this is called the second way conducive to the plane of bare awareness, nothingness. Further, monks, a wise meditator understands, I do not belong to anyone anywhere nor is there anything belonging to me anywhere at all. Practicing in this way and often meditating in this way, the mind becomes clear and calm. And with this clear and serene awareness, one experiences the plane of bare awareness at that time. Monks, this is called the second way conducive to bare awareness. Further, monks, a wise meditator understands sensory gratification here and now or sensory gratification that is to come, sensory perceptions here and now or those that are to come, Ma matter here and now and matter that is to come, material perceptions here and now and all of those that are to come. The perception of the unshakable, the jhanas, and the perception of the plane of bare awareness, all of them are only just perceptions. Where these perceptions are completely given up, this is peaceful, this is sublime, that is, the plane between awareness and its limit. 
practicing in this way and often meditating in this way, the mind becomes clear and calm. With this clear and serene awareness, one experiences the plane between awareness and its limit. Monks, this is called the first way conducive to the plane between awareness and its limit. When this was said, the Venerable Ananda asked the Buddha, Bhante, if a monk practices like this thinking, there is nothing and nothing of me. There will not be anything, nor will I be. All of that which is, I am letting go. Thus one gains steadiness of mind. Could some monk here be completely liberated, and some others not? It is possible, Ananda. But what is the cause, Bhante? What is the condition for this? Here, Ananda, one practices in this way, thinking, There is nothing and nothing of me. There will not be anything, nor will I be. All of that which is, I am letting go. Thus one gains steadiness of mind. Then one takes pleasure in it looks forward to it, and remains attached to it. When one takes pleasure in it, looks forward to it, and remains attached to it, to this steady mental calm, one's mind remains dependent upon it by clinging. Ananda, one with clinging is not completely liberated. Bhante, what does one's mind then cling to? The plane between awareness and its limit, Ananda. Bhante, this surely must be the best kind of clinging. Surely, Ananda, this is the best kind of clinging, namely the plane between awareness and its limit. Here, Ananda, one practices in this way thinking, there is nothing and nothing of me. There will not be anything, nor will I be. All of that which is, I am letting go. Thus one gains steadiness of mind. Then one takes no pleasure in it, does not look forward to it, and does not remain attached. When one takes no pleasure in it and does not look forward to it and does not remain attached to that steady mental calm, one's mind is independent from it because of not clinging. Ananda, one without clinging is completely liberated. How wonderful, Bhante! How incredible, Bhante! Surely, Bhante, the Awakened One has explained the crossing of the flood from one support to the next. But Bhante, now what is this unbinding of the Aryas? Here, Ananda, a wise meditator understands sensory gratification here and now or sensory gratification that is to come, sensory perceptions here and now, or sensory perceptions that are to come, matter here and now, or matter that is to come, material perceptions here and now, and material perceptions that are to come, the perception of the unshakable, the jhanas, the perception of the plane of bare awareness and the plane between awareness and its limit. This is personality as far as personality goes. But this is the deathless ananda, namely the unbinding of the mind through not clinging.
Therefore, the instructed wise meditator reflects, Right now, physical perception is devouring me. In the past also, physical perception devoured me. In the future too, physical perception will devour me, just as it is now devouring me. If I work to seek happiness in future physical perception, this physical perception would then devour me, just as I am here and now being devoured by it. Understanding like this, one lets go of all previous physical perceptions and does not long for future physical perceptions. One practices for this interest towards physical perception, towards its appeasement and its complete release. Right now, sensations are devouring me. In the past also, sensations were devouring me. And in the future too, sensation will devour, devour me just as it is now devouring me. If I were to seek happiness in future sensations, these sensations would then devour me, just as I am here and now being devoured by them. Understanding like this, one lets go of previous sensations and does not long for future ones. One practices for letting go of sensation towards their appeasement and their complete release. Right now, cognition is devouring me. In the past also, cognition devoured me. And in the future too, cognition will devour me, just as it is now devouring me. If I were to seek happiness in future cognition, this cognition would then devour me, just as I am here and now being devoured by it. Understanding like this, one lets go of all previous cognition and does not long for future cognition. One practices for disinterest letting go of cognition towards its appeasement and its complete release. Right now, mental activity is devouring me. In the past also, mental activity was devouring me. And in the future too, mental activity will devour me just as I am now devoured by it. If I were to seek happiness in future mental activity, this mental activity would then devour me, just as I am here and now being devoured by it. Understanding like this, one lets go of all previous mental activity and does not long for future mental activity. One practices for the complete letting go of mental activity towards its appeasement and its complete release. Right now, awareness is devouring me. In the past also, awareness devoured me. And in the future too, Awareness will devour me, just as it is now devouring me. If I were to seek happiness in future awareness, this awareness would then devour me, just as I am here and now being devoured by it. Understanding like this, one lets go of previous awareness and does not long for future awareness. One practices for the complete letting go of awareness 
towards its appeasement and complete release. Monks, physical perception is not self. For if physical perception was self, this physical perception would never come upon hurt. And one could decide, let my physical perception be like this, let my physical perception be like that. But physical perception is not self. And because because physical perception does come upon hurt. And one cannot decide, let my physical perception be like this, let my physical perception be like that. Monks, sensations are not self. For if sensations were self, these sensations would never come upon hurt. And one could decide, let my sensations be like this, let my sensations be like that. But sensations are not self, because sensations do come upon hurt. And one cannot decide, let my sensations be like this, let my sensations be like that. Cognition is not self. For if this cognition was self, this cognition would never come upon any hurt. And one could decide, let my cognition be like this, and let my cognition be like that. But cognition is not self. Because cognition does come upon hurt. And one cannot decide, always let my cognition be like this, let my cognition be like that. Mental activity is not self. For if mental activity were self, this mental activity would never come upon any hurt. And one could, de could decide, let my mental activity be like this. Let my mental activity be like that. But mental activity is not self. Because mental activity does come upon hurt. And one cannot decide, let my mental activity be like this. Let my mental activity be like that. Awareness is not self. For if this awareness were self, this awareness would never come upon any hurt. And one could decide, let my awareness be like this. Let my awareness be like that. But this awareness is not self. Because this awareness does come upon hurt. And one cannot decide, let my awareness be like this, let my awareness be like that. What do you think, monks? Is physical perception changing or unchanging? It is changing, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, is that pleasant or unpleasant? It is unpleasant, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, unpleasant, and completely ephemeral, is it sound to regard it as, this is me. I am this. This is myself. It is not, Bhante. What do you think, monks? Are sensations changing or unchanging? They are changing, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, is that pleasant or unpleasant? It is unpleasant, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, unpleasant, and completely ephemeral, is it sound to regard it as, this is me, I am this, this is myself? It is not, Bhante. 
What do you think, monks? Is cognition changing or unchanging? It is changing, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, is that pleasant or unpleasant? It is unpleasant, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, unpleasant and completely ephemeral, is it sound to regard it as, this is me, I am this, this is myself, it is not Bhante. What do you think, monks? Is mental activity changing or unchanging? It is changing, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, is that pleasant or unpleasant? It is unpleasant, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, unpleasant, and completely ephemeral, is it sound to regard it as, this is me, I am this, this is myself, it is not Bhante. What do you think, monks? Is awareness changing or unchanging? It is changing, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, is that pleasant or unpleasant? It is unpleasant, Bhante. And that which is continually changing, unpleasant and completely ephemeral, is it sound to regard it as this is me, I am this, this is myself, it is not Bhante. Therefore, monks, any kind of physical perception, whether past, present, or future, within or without, gross or subtle, low or high, far or near, one should see all material perception with wise discernment as it is. This is not me. This is not who I am. This is not myself. This is how one should understand it as it actually is by practical reasoning. Therefore, monks, any kind of sensations, whether past, present, or future, within or without, gross or subtle, low or high, far or near, one should see all sensations with wise discernment as they are. This is not me. This is not who I am. This is not myself. This is how one should understand them, as they actually are, by practice, practical reasoning. Therefore, monks, any kind of cognition, whether past, present, or future, within or without, gross or subtle, low or high, far or near, one should see all cognition with wise discernment as it is. This is not me. This is not who I am. This is not myself. This is how one should understand it as it actually is, by practical reasoning. Therefore, monks, any kind of mental activities whether it is past, present, or future, within or without, gross or subtle, low or high, far or near, one should see all material perception, all mental activity, sorry, with wise discernment as they are. This is not me. This is not who I am. This is not myself. This is how one should understand it, as it actually is by practical reasoning. 
Therefore, monks, any kind of awareness, whether past, present, or future, within or without, gross or subtle, low or high, far or near, one should see all awareness with wise discernment as it is. This is not me. This is not who I am. This is not myself. This is how one should understand it as it actually is by practical reasoning. Monks, that wise meditator is one who undoes and does not accumulate. One who lets go and does not hold on. One who disperses and does not pile up. One who extinguishes and does not kindle. And how does one undo and not accumulate? One does away with physical perception and does not accumulate it. One does away with sensations and does not accumulate them. One does away with cognition and does not accumulate it. One does away with mental activity and does not accumulate it. One does away with awareness and does not accumulate it. How does one let go and not hold on? One lets go of material perception and does not hold on to it. One lets go of sensations and does not hold on to them. One lets go of cognition and does not hold on to it. One lets go of mental activity and does not hold on to it. One lets go of awareness and does not hold on to it. How does one disperse and not amass? One disperses material perception. One does not amass it. One disperses sensations and does not pile it up. One disperses cognition and does not pile it up. One disperses mental activity and does not pile it up. One disperses awareness and does not pile it up. How does one extinguish and not kindle? One extinguishes physical perception. One does not kindle it. One extinguishes sensations and does not kindle them. One extinguishes cognition and does not kindle it. One extinguishes mental activity and does not kindle it. One extinguishes awareness and does not kindle it. Seeing in this way, monks, a wise meditator completely lets go of physical perception, completely lets go of sensations, completely lets go of cognition, completely lets go of mental activity, completely lets go of awareness, completely letting go, one is unagitated. Free from agitation, one is unbinded. Thus unbound, one knows, this is freedom. The birth of hurtful states is finished. Lived is the spiritual life. Done is what had to be done. There is no more conceit here. Then a monk is one who neither undoes nor accumulate, but remains undone who neither lets go nor hold on, but remains not holding, who neither disperses nor pile up, but remains dispersed, 
who neither extinguishes nor kindle, but remains extinguished. How does one neither undo nor accumulates, but remains undone? One neither undoes nor accumulate physical perceptions, but remains undone from it. One neither undoes nor accumulates sensations, but remains undone from them. One neither undoes nor accumulates cognition, but remains undone from it. One neither undoes nor accumulate mental activity, but remains undone from it. One does not neither undoes nor accumulate awareness, but remains undone from it. How does one neither lets go nor hold on, but remains not holding? One neither lets go nor hold on to physical perception, but remains not holding. One neither lets go nor hold on to sensations, but remains not holding. One neither lets go nor hold on to cognition, but remains not holding. One neither lets go nor hold on to mental activities, but remains not holding. One neither lets go nor hold on to awareness, but remains not holding. How does one neither disperses nor pile on, but remains dispersed? One neither disperses nor pile on physical perception, but remains dispersed from it. One neither disperses nor pile on sensations, but remains dispersed from them. One neither disperses nor pile on cognition, but remains dispersed from them. One neither disperses nor pile on mental activity, but remains dispersed from it. One neither disperses nor pile on awareness, but remains dispersed from it. One does, how does one neither extinguishes nor kindle, but remains extinguished? One neither extinguishes nor kindle physical perception, but remains extinguished from it. One neither extinguishes nor kindles sensations, but remains extinguished from them. One neither extinguishes nor kindle cognition, but remains extinguished from it. One neither extinguishes nor kindle mental activity, but remains extinguished from it. One neither extinguishes nor kindle awareness, but remains extinguished from it. With such an emancipated mind, monks, even Indra and its devas, Brahma and Pajapati, pay their respects from afar, saying, Our respects to the highest being. Homage to the one gone beyond. Those for who no one can comprehend what they meditate upon. Thus, Ananda, I have explained the path conducive to the unshakable, the path conducive to the plane of bare awareness the path conducive to the plane between awareness and its limit, and the path to crossing the flood from one support to the next, and the unbinding of the Aryas. Ananda, what should be done by a teacher for his students, holding their best interest at heart, out of loving compassion, 
that I have done for you. There are these roots of trees, monks. There are these empty huts. Meditate, monks, do not be neglectful, lest you become remorseful when the time has passed. This is my advice to you. Sadhu, sadhu.